everyone, this is Jamie Lee Mendoz, the flute expert on virtualsheetmusic.com. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of the most famous flute pieces out there, uh, Mozart Flute Concerto Number no. 2 in D major. Um, the reason why I chose this one instead of number 1 is because um, I get uh, for some reason, um, I get more inquiries about uh, this one instead of uh, uh, rather than uh, number one, which is in G major. Um, I guess uh, more people like this one. Um, uh, personally, I like uh, the other one better, uh, number one. Um, well, there are a couple of different reasons, but you know, um, I, I like the melody. In the first one better it's a little more triumphant melody uh, to me um, also I like the fact that uh, that one is the one that Mozart actually wrote for a flute um, as many of you already know this one uh, number two in D major uh, was written for oboe first and then later uh, transcribed uh, for flute um, so I guess I have a little bit of a uh, favoritism towards uh, number one because of that as well. But anyhow, um, nonetheless, so this is a beautiful piece. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean I hate this piece. I, I love this piece as well. Uh, um, I mean, in fact, Mozart is one of my favorite, all-time favorite composers. He's in my top two. <laughs> um, if you're curious, the other one is J.S. Bach. Um, so, so yeah, so um, probably in this video, we won't be able to go through the whole piece. Um, I mean, uh, the whole movement for that matter, uh, because of the you know time uh, issue. Um, and also it's really difficult to get into every single details in this kind of video setting. Um, but uh, my goal is to maybe just point you out um, on, um, major issues in uh, the exposition um, and so then uh, with the, those ideas you can go through the whole first movement uh, because it's pretty much the same thing. So um, as we uh, as I showed you just briefly last week uh, right off the bat we have a very long note um, in the beginning of the first movement but before we get to that we have that um, beginning trill there now it, I I want you to play all of these trills well not all of the trills in the first movement but most of these trill figures that you play um, after the same note. So for example here, same thing in the beginning. So there's a D first and then there's a D trill. Now so whenever you have these figures, I want you to play the trill starting from the note above. So in this case it'll be E. So instead of playing so starting the trill on the D so um, start the trill on the E instead. Yeah, so um, because that's the style uh, from this uh, particular period. Um, another thing uh, in this passage I want you to um, watch out for is the C sharp. This is one of the things that a lot of flute players kind of neglect. Um, C sharp is naturally a very sharp note on the flute. So no matter which piece you play, no matter how fast, slow the passage is, you have to watch out for the pitch. Yes, because it just tends to be very, very sharp if you are not careful. So um, you, you should intentionally uh, bring down the pitch when, when even, even in this kind of passing passage. Otherwise, it could sound like this. I'll try my best to mess up. Do you hear this uh, very sharp C sharp here? Um, so instead, try to try to send more air down into the tube instead of just blowing it out there. Yeah. 
huh? And then we talked about that holding the long note last time. And there were a couple things, a few things that we talked about last time. So uh, work out and then um, also uh, try to evenly distribute your air. So conserve your air. Don't blow out everything in the beginning. Start small or uh, 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 limit your vibrato usage and then broad, uh, broaden your vibrato as you go um, so that you can uh, fill out how many measures here, uh, four measures, including the first beginning measure, so five measures of um, the melody there. So in this way, you're able to actually this time um, I was able to hold the breath from the beginning till the end of the whole phrase, which was measure, what is it, 38. Um, if you are not able to do that, if you're a beginner, if you are um, an intermediate student, um, um, uh, you can always take a breath um, after the long note. So. So um, in measure 37 after the first D. So you can breathe there. That would be my choice. There are some people who breathe after A in that measure. So here. That's really not my first choice. Um, but it's up to you. I, I just feel like if you were to breathe there, it interrupts the flow of the whole phrase. So um, it's best to uh, hold the breath maybe uh, for the entire phrase till what was the measure 38 uh, but if you can't then um, i think the best spot to breathe is in the measure 37 right after the first d another thing in this phrase you want to watch out for is these a's now you will see these figures a lot throughout this movement um, um, in fact there is another one in measure 39 as well which is a repeating note re repeating quarter notes whenever you have these try not to play them detached totally detached and kind of robotic way so sounds kind of mechanical and emotionless right instead make it make it sound so that there is a direction and plus bounce bum 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 it has somewhere to go so as you can hear I'm vibrating each note and I'm not quite ending the note but I'm not quite slurring, I mean, legatoing the whole thing either. There is a slight uh, separation, but I'm not stopping the air altogether. So I just we just passed the same passage in uh, 39 G's the, uh, the the two G's there. So uh, think about always think about direction where you're heading towards. Um, now I have to mention the measure uh, 44 and 45 because uh, the uh, this passage is one of the passages that students tend to get scared of. Uh, but there is really no reason to. Um, a lot of students tend to focus on the high note, making the high note. So um, in the end, it sounds kind of like this. So all I hear is the top note. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, but really, um, if you think about it, that's not, the, that's not the only important note. All the other notes are important. And in fact, you should be able to feel the beat even if we have these kind of off figures, which means that the beat is in the first note. Bottom, bum, bum, bottom, bum, bum, bottom, bum, bum. So, but that doesn't also mean that you should emphasize those first note of each group 
too much so that it sounds kind of drag, dragged on, right? So this is wrong, uh, wrong example. Let me play a wrong example first. Yeah, this sounds kind of tedious, right? Yeah, so. So make sure that you um, take care of these lower notes as well as the top note. I guess that's what I um, am trying to say. So um, after that, we um, in measure, which measure is this? So in measure 50, 50, and also 53, and also 56, we have all of these trill figures. Same trill figures as the one we had in the very beginning. So same thing, all of these trills, I want you to play from above. So um, from starting from D. I mean, uh, B, I'm sorry. So instead of starting on A like this, start from the B. suggest you to do the same in measure 73 as well so there um, yeah same thing start from the above um, and then um, Whenever you have these things, uh, this is very Mo Mozart particular uh, shapes um, in major, let's see, 80, for example. Whenever you have these little phrases, it's important to, of course, shape these little ones, but always think about these little ones in the big picture. So, for example, here. So yeah, this is one phrase here, but this is not just one separate group, it's a part of a bigger group here. Uh, so it starts from actually two measures before. keeps going so um, even if you're uh, taking a rest there in measure 81 um, don't think of it as a total rest think of it as a continuation because even if you're taking a rest the orchestra or um, if you're playing with a pianist the piano the music keeps going so think about it always um, in the whole context not just your flute line yeah um, in the very uh, last part of the exposition, it's a very triumphant ending. I mean, it's not the real end, but end of the exposition. Um, try not to rush so much. Um, it's okay to... Uh, I mean, we tend to get a little faster as we get excited on the stage, and that's totally fine. Um, but uh, try not to rush. Uh, um, in terms of um, note values. So uh, try not to cut all the notes too short. I guess that's that's uh, what I'm trying to say. So because then you might also, your fingers might get all jumbled together and you know, that's not what you want. Um, So I don't have a C sharp trill key on my flute. I uh, when I ordered this, uh, I, I play the Brandon uh, Brandon Brothers flute body, and then I have Lafan head joint. 
um, when I ordered my flute, I didn't um, order the C sharp trill key. Um, now I kind of regret it because um, it definitely makes uh, your playing more convenient. Um, but um, I mean, that's not the end of the world. The reason why I didn't order C sharp trill key originally is because I was worried that it's going to actually weigh my flute down. I was having, at the time, I was having a um, some problem with my right arm. And so I didn't want to put any more weight and I'm al already so petite. Um, so, um, but I think I could have. I could have managed to have a C-sharp key. So if you have one, lucky you. If you don't, that's not the end of the world. So you can just trill, as you already probably know, trill uh, your thumb and then the first finger all together. So same thing here. Uh, trill starts from the above, so C-sharp. So, and then in the, at the end, the same thing. Start from the C, uh, C sharp and then trill, and then the end of the exposition. Um, I hope I um, explained um, a few of the uh, main points of the exposition uh, clearly. Um, if you have any more questions on this part of this concerto or any other parts, um, any other questions uh, that's not related to this uh, piece, that's fine. Always ask me. Uh, you can leave a comment on virtualsheetmusic.com below this particular video. Um, or you can email me uh, through my website, mrsflute.com as well. Um, I hope you have a great October and um, I will see you next time.